I'm so excited to have you joining me today to create this really fun children's pullover. I absolutely love this crochet pullover. These are crochet stitches that are made to look a bit knit. This is a very simplistic pattern repeat, so we're gonna have a lot of fun with it. I do think that this could be a beginner level pattern, and even if you've never crocheted a garment before, I love working in top down sweaters and pullovers for a beginner because I think they're very friendly. I made this sweater in the size six and I used the Brava sport weight in the color tide pool. For this video, I will be making a size 10 sweater, a size child 10, and I will be using the Brava sport weight hunter. I love this Brava yarn. It's one of the softest and amazingest acrylic yarns I've ever come across. It is my go-to and I love it. This is a sport weight, which gives it a nice wear and drape. It's fantastic. And then you will also need a pair of scissors, a stitch marker. Actually, you'll want four stitch markers, possibly five. I would pull out five just so you, in case you lose one or you, you want to mark certain stitches. Um, you will need that for this pattern because we're going to be marking where we do our increases. And then you will need a crochet hook. This is the size G four millimeter crochet hook from Furls. This is their alpha line. It is fantastic. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's talk about the construction. This is a top down sweater. What that means is we're going to start working from the top. First, we're going to be creating this ribbing which you can go down a hook size if needed, but um, I was able to do match the gauge with the G hook. So you're going to do some ribbing. We're gonna be doing those in rows and then joining, and then we're going to single crochet around one edge of that ribbing in the back loop, and then we will be working down. We're going to mark where our increases will be, and we will work in the stitch pattern increasing as we go and it will be one big piece and then we will split for the arms and the body and work those individually while also decreasing i don't know if you can see the decreases here they hide quite well but also decreasing on the sleeves so that they taper down and then there's the body if you like you can do some shaping to the body by decreasing on the sides and then you can also increase as well and notes on that are in the pattern so we're gonna go ahead and get started by making the size 10. To start with this ribbing, we will chain six. So simply make a slip knot, place it on your hook, and I'm using the G hook for this, and we will chain six. I'm going to tighten down that last chain. It's our turning chain for this row only. Now we're going to start by working in what will be the back loops. So we're going to single crochet across in the back loops, starting in that second chain from the hook. So we're single crocheting five. And then at the end of this row, you will turn and it's not necessary to chain one on the end of the rows. It really just causes some bulk. It's something that can be omitted. So I'm still working in the back loops only and I'm going to just simply omit that chain one and I'm just gonna start by single crocheting in the back loops only across this row. So we're single crocheting five stitches for every row. And now we're simply going to be repeating that row. So we're going to turn and single crochet in the back loops only for five. We will do this until we have a total of 74 rows for the size 10. Once you have 74 rows of single crocheting in the back loop only, come on back. Now that I have the ribbing done for the neck of this sweater, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to join these edges. So this was my first row and this is my current row. What I'm going to do is I'm going to enter the back loop of my current row, then grab your first row and insert your hook through the loop on the first row and then slip stitch those together. This makes a really unnoticeable join. So I'm going through the back loop of my current row and I'm grabbing the stitch from the first row and I'm slip stitching those together. I will do that for the five stitches down 
these rows and then we'll be ready to work around this. All right, so that's pretty um, hidden in there and it's time for us to start to work around this one side. So we want to start working down our sweater. So what we will do is we will start by single crocheting in um, one slip stitch per row. So we're gonna start by just doing one slip stitch per row. So I'm gonna do my first stitch and then I'm going to place the stitch marker. And then I'm gonna keep on going and I'm doing one slip stitch per row. So I ha will have 74 stitches, because I have 74 rows here. 74 slip stitches all the way around the one edge of this neck ribbing. Now that I've worked 76 slip stitches around one edge, it's time for us to start to um, get our stitch markers in place so that we know how to increase when we need to. So for this round, we will be working into the back loop only of those slip stitches. It just leaves a nice line for us when we're um, working down this side. So I'm going to start by doing a single crochet stitch for 27 stitches. So single crochet 27, and then we're gonna pick up a stitch marker. Now that I've single crocheted 27 stitches, I'm going to pick up a stitch marker and place it. I like to chain, to save my colorful stitch marker that's different from the rest for the end of the round so I know when I've ended each round. So now it's time for me to single crochet 10 and place a stitch marker. And we're single crocheting in those back loops only. And after single crocheting 10, we're going to go ahead and place another stitch marker. And now we're going to repeat what we've done so far for this round. So I'm going to do what I just did again. I'm going to single crochet 27 and then place a stitch marker. And now I'm going to work the last 10 stitches in this round and place my yellow stitch marker. So we haven't increased for this round. We still just have 74 stitches, but we have placed our stitch markers in strategic places around the edge of this here. All right, so our established stitch pattern for this sweater is to do a single crochet into the back loop only and then a split single crochet. And that's our established stitch pattern. It's just single crocheting into the back loop only and then a split single crochet. And for the next round, the same stitch is worked in the same stitch. And what I mean by that is if the, your next stitch is a back loop only, you're gonna work another back loop only single crochet. And the one after that would be a split single crochet. So we're gonna start by working in the established stitch pattern. So I'm gonna work a single crochet in the back loop only, and then I'm going to work a split single crochet. Single crochet into the back loop only, and a split single crochet. I'm going to work that established stitch pattern until I get to my first stitch marker. Right, now that I've gone to the stitch with my um, stitch marker, I'm gonna move the stitch marker and we are going to work three single crochets into this next stitch. And now we're going to move our stitch marker up to the center of those three single crochets. So we've increased by two. And now for our very next stitch, we wanna keep working in that stitch pattern. So for this round, it's a little bit more difficult to know what to go to. So we're just gonna simply follow and count backwards. So this was a split single crochet. The next one was a single crochet in the back loop only. And so if we were to count these as working in the stitch pattern, it would have been a split single crochet single crochet in the back loop only and a split single crochet, which means our next stitch would be a single crochet into the back loop only. And then a split single crochet for the next one. And then we're gonna repeat that until our next stitch marker. And now that we're at our next stitch marker, we're going to do the exact same thing. So every time we come to a stitch marker on an even row, this is where we're gonna be doing some increasing. So now I'm gonna single crochet three 
stitches into that next stitch. I'm going to move my stitch marker up to that center stitch. And now I'm going to continue to work in pattern, which the last stitch before doing the three was also a single crochet in the back loop. So it would be SSC, back loop, SSC, and then back loop. So I'm going to repeat these steps all the way around, working the established stitch pattern and then increasing on every single stitch marker. Now that I've worked around increasing in that last stitch, we're going to work around again, but this round we will not be increasing. So we're just going to work in the established stitch pattern. So our first stitch will be in the back loop and our next stitch will be a split single crochet. And it's much easier to see now what stitches we'll be working because we're simply working the same stitch as the row below. I'll show you what to do when we get to our increase sections. All right, so as we come to these three uh, single crochets that were an increase section, I'm simply going to keep working in pattern. So I worked this stitch in the back loop only, so the next one I'll work as a split single crochet. For the next stitch, I'll be moving the stitch marker and moving my stitch up while I work. And this one will be a back loop only. And then I'm simply going to move that stitch marker up one row. And then the next stitch will be a split single crochet. And then you just keep working in pattern as the stitch on the row below. So keep working in pattern all the way around, simply work moving the stitch marker up as you come to the increase sections and work those increases in the same stitch pattern, established stitch pattern. So we are going to repeat the last two rows. So we'll do one row where we will increase at every stitch marker and the next row where we will just work in the established stitch pattern without increasing. We're going to be doing that for um, 10 more times. So a total of 11 increases along each stitch marker. At, that, at the end of those increases, you will have 162 stitches around. And at that point, we're just simply going to work three, three more rounds without increasing. So once you get those rounds done, come on back. Now that we've worked the rounds that we've needed to increasing on our four points and we would increase by eight stitches every other round, it is time for us to split for the body and the sleeves. So this is how we're going to do this. I have already started this process. So I'm counting from my uh, yellow stitch marker. I'm counting that stitch and I'm counting across 50. So I worked 50 stitches in the established stitch pattern. Now I am going to chain six and then skip 32 stitches. I'm going to skip 32 stitches across here and then work the very next stitch that I need to in the established stitch pattern. And I'm going to flip it here and kind of turn. So we have a hole here. That's fine. That's for our arm. And now the stitches I'm going to work across the back here is going to be a total of 48 stitches. I've already worked my first one after doing those chains for the underarm. So now I'm going to work 48 stitches. And I can take out this stitch marker and now I'm going to do a chain six. And then I'm going to skip 32 stitches again, which brings us back to our first stitch in the round. So I'll simply come right back to that first stitch and work it in the established stitch pattern. Now I am going to mark this first stitch in the round, but I'm actually just going to mark the front of it because I'll be able to follow it down. I'm, I'm not going to stop and move it up for every round from here on out. And I will talk about why. Now it's time for us to just keep working round and round and round, building out this body. For the size 10, you can work that for a total of 44 rounds. 
until we get to that bottom ribbing. If you want the length of this to be shorter or longer, this is where you would add or decrease rounds. So we're just gonna simply chill and work 44 rounds in the established stitch pattern, not joining, working continuously. And when you get to the chain stitches across here for the arms that are on the other arms, just work your first round and single crochet across those. And then in the next round, you will continue working in that established stitch pattern across those stitches. So work those rounds, those body rounds, and then come on back. Now that I've crocheted the length I want, and this is where once again, you can adjust by either doing more rows or less rows, depending on how you want this to um, hit on the bottom of your body. The sleeves are up here, they're still empty. But before we move on to the sleeves, we wanna finish off this ribbon. So in order to do the ribbing, I like to go ahead and slip stitch into my next stitch just to simply even out any um, type of job going on there. Because we were working continuously, we kind of had a bit of um, a gap between like each row in height. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to chain 11. And now in the second chain from the hook, we are going to single crochet. And for the ribbon, we are going to be doing um, single crocheting in the back loops only. And that's what creates the ribbon. So we're working in rows here along the edge and we're single crocheting in the back loops only. And now that I've single crocheted 10, and yes, you'll have a little bit of curling till you get going here. I'm going to slip stitch into the back loop only along the body and I'm going to slip stitch into the next two stitches. And then I'm going to turn my work. We're working in rows here and I am not going to work those two slip stitches from the body. I'm going to skip those two slip stitches and in the back loop only, I'm going to single crochet 10. So every single time we work a row, there's going to be 10 single crochets and they will be worked in the back loop only. Now I just want to note that if your ribbing ends up being a bit loose, you can always go down a hook size if you like a little bit of a tighter ribbing. So now that I've single crocheted 10 across here, I am going to go ahead and turn again. And I know normally in a lot of patterns it says to chain one here, but we're going to go ahead and omit that. We really don't need to chain one on the edge, it just adds a necessary bulk. So we're going to go ahead and single crochet in the back loop only for 10. And now I'm going to slip stitch two of the stitches from the body in the back loop only on the edge. And then I'm going to turn my work and I'm going to be repeating the last two rows, rows two and three. So I'll skip the two slip stitches and slip stitch in the back loop only for 10, turn, work in the back loop only for 10 single crochet stitches and then slip stitch two from the body. So you're just repeating the last two rows you're going to do that all the way around the bottom of this sweater and come on back and I'll show you how to join to your starting edge. All right, so now that we've worked our ribbing all the way around the bottom of this sweater, it's time for us to join our starting edge with our finishing edge. So to do this, I am going to start by inserting my hook into the back loop of the next stitch on my current edge. And then I'm going to go to my first edge and I'm going to insert my hook through the loop of the first edge, yarn over and pull through all the loops on the hook to do a slip stitch. So it's almost like we're slip stitching everything together here. So I go through the back loop, I go through the loop on my first edge, yarn over and slip stitch. Do that all the way across these stitches to close this opening. Now that I've closed all those stitches by doing those slip stitches, I can simply take my yarn and fasten off and then go ahead and weave in any ends. Now we're going to head back to the sleeves. So we've got this nice sweater and this is where I love these type of patterns because you can make easy adjustments. If you prefer and you don't want to do long sleeves, you can do short sleeves. You can just work the next section of sleeve patterns until you feel like you've got the length that you want. So let's go ahead and we're going to start with one of our sleeves. Now for the sleeves, we want to attach our yarn towards the center of the underneath of the arm. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to attach 
my yarn with a slip stitch. But remember, we are going to re be working this continuous as well. So keep that stitch marker close so that we can mark this very first stitch. So I'm going to join the tight slip stitches to get my yarn there. And now I'm going to work my first stitch, which would be in the back loop only, but these um, stitches under the arm, since they were chained, they'll be most likely worked in the single crochet style. And on the next round, start working in the established stitch pattern for these stitches. You don't have to stress about under the arm too much because you don't see it at the seam, so it's fine. So after joining the yarn, we are simply going to single crochet into these stitches under the arm. We're not going to worry about working these in stitch pattern because that will happen on the next round. I'm gonna go ahead and mark that first stitch with a stitch marker since we're working continuously. And I'm going to work all of these chain stitches underneath the arm. And then I'll just simply start working the stitches that are um, on this, on this, on in the stitch pattern repeat. So the stitches that are above the underarm, these all will be worked in the stitch pattern repeat. Now that I'm back to the beginning, I will have a total of 38 stitches for the size 10. That is because when we were working, the when we split for the sleeves and the body, we chained six and we had, and then we skipped um, a total of 32 stitches. So we skipped 32 and we chained six, which means we'll have 38 stitches around now. You will find in your corners, you're going to have um, some holes. That's okay, very normal. You can come back in and, and stitch those closed later with your tail end in here. Um, if, you're, if, you really, if that really bugs you, you can always um, pick up extra yarn in this area, almost like a single crocheting things together to do that um, hole, to decrease that hole. For me, because we're working in stitch pattern, I like to just come back and sew it later. That way I don't have anything that looks confusing to me. So now in order to continue to working to work this across, we wanna make sure that we're working in our stitch pattern. So sometimes it takes looking ahead and seeing what our stitches are that are really defined ahead, since these were worked in single crochet, and then kind of working our, ourselves backwards. So if this was a split single crochet, then I would have a um, single crochet in the back loop, split single crochet, single crochet in the back loop, and so forth. So you wanna go ahead and keep working in the stitch pattern all the way around and now that we've got these stitches underneath the arm, we can see them to work in that stitch pattern. Go ahead and continue to mark that first stitch in the round because you do not want to leave, lose track of it. All right, so I have worked eight rounds because I want to talk to you about the next um, portion of this sleeve. So I've worked eight rounds completely in doing the established stitch pattern, and now it's time for me to decrease. So for this pattern, for size 10, we will be working a total of 60 sleeve rounds while also single crocheting three together underneath the arm on every eighth round. So let me show you how we do that. So I'm still marking the first stitch in my round, and then I'm simply going to take the next three stitches, and you can either try to work them in pattern or not. It's a decrease, so it's not too big of a deal however you choose to do it. And I'm just going to single crochet three together, and I'm going to mark that stitch. And then I'm going to be working in the established stitch pattern all the way around. Now when we single crochet three together, we're decreasing by two, so that it makes it that the, it doesn't mess up that established stitch pattern. So when you come back around, this would be worked as if it were a split single crochet. And you just simply work into that V for the decrease for that um, split single crochet when you work back around. So we are going to single crochet three together every eighth round. Now I am definitely the stitch marker queen when it comes to decreasing on sleeves. I marked the very first round under the sleeve so I knew when I got to the eighth round and I will probably do that again. I'll keep my stitch marker for uh, my first stitch around under the arm. That one is not as important to me as knowing when I get to the eighth round. There are times where I'll even come back with a stitch marker. I'll use several 
and I'll just mark like where I decreased. You can usually see it, but I like to be lazy and not have to search for where I decreased. And this way it's a really good visual that I know like, okay, when I get to the eighth round again, I'm going to decrease. Now you're only going to decrease until you have 24 stitches. Once you have 24 stitches, you'll just continue working in that established stitch pattern until you get to 60 total rounds. And then we will go on to the sleeve cuff. So go ahead and work this sleeve while doing those decreases, the single crochet three together under the arm every eighth round until you have a total of 24 stitches and then just keep on working until you have a total of 60 sleeve rounds and then come on back. Once we've worked our sleeves for the amount of rows rounds that we need for this one, it was a 60 total rounds and we decreased every eighth round until we got to the amount of stitches that we needed. And now it's time at the very end here to do the cuff. So to do the cuff on the end of the sweater, we're going to start by chaining seven. And now we're going to single crochet into the second chain from the hook and the rest across. So this is just like we did for the base of this sweater, the bottom of it, but we are doing less um, stitches for the sleeves. You can always adjust this to be the thickness you want for the cuff by adding or decreasing that starting chain. And now just like we did on the bottom, we will slip stitch into the next two stitches. I like to use the back loops only, but if you prefer to go through the whole stitch, you can. And then we're going to turn and we're going to skip those two slip stitches from the body and single crochet in the back loop only for the six stitches. And then we're going to turn and no need to chain one and in the back loop only single crochet across those six stitches and then slip two from the edge of the arm and then repeat those last two rows just like we did on the bottom and you'll go all the way around this opening and when you get back to this part we will you just simply join the same way we did on the bottom here by slip stitching into the back loop of your um, last edge and the front loop of your first edge. So this is the last step you need to do other than weaving in ends and some light blocking for the sweater and then you are ready to wear it. I know my boys are going to have a love hate relationship with this sweater. They think it's cozy, but they live in Florida. So it's not uh, ideal for the Florida weather to wear a sweater pretty much ever, but there's a couple days in the year we can. So I have completely enjoyed this pattern. I hope you have too. I hope you like this texture. It is really nice. And I want you to come back and join me again soon. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. I love doing these videos and I love when you enjoy them as well. So enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you on the next project.